You're looking through the cameras. When suddenly you hear a noise. That rabbit thing is at your door again. You can only watch as her power slowly goes down. That chicken thing won't leave. It just keeps on coming back. The bear, well, what's his name? Oh, Freddy. You can hear his sinister laughter from down the hallway, somewhere in the darkness. The pirate left its stage, and looks like it's about to dash to the office. <laughs> that is what makes FNAF 1 such a great game. I went so over dramatic with that, but I felt like I had to. Okay, so that that whole scenario is exactly why FNAF 1 is amazing. The just the the fear of the un, of the unknown and everything culminates in a very simple but very good and scary game. Before we get into the main point of this video, I want to talk about well, what I mean by the the title of the video. I've gone on record on this channel to say I think out of the main six FNAF games, FNAF 2 is arguably the worst for in my personal ranking it is and there's a many reasons for that and i'd like to touch on that in this video but i want to go over what makes the first game so good it's not going to take that long i'm just going to have some footage of the clips that we're just playing in the background the office in fnaf 1 is a defining characteristic of the game it's a very closed in space and there's cobwebs and trash everywhere and you all you have to, to look to look around your surroundings is two measly lights on the doors. It's very unsettling to say the least, with the quiet humming in the back and the and just the only real moving thing in the office is the fan. Now speaking of the doors, the doors or how you defend yourself in this game, and it is a very, very weak defense because the building has a power source. The power source is not a lot, and you need to strategically use the lights and the cameras and the doors and to make sure that you can stay alive, but if the power runs out, you're dead. If, if the, anything gets in your office, you're dead. It's a very dreadful situation because over the course of the nights, you hear another person who worked in the office, and on the fourth night, we hear him get brutally murdered by who knows what. All of this just adds to the overall horror of the game, and it might not be scary to some, but it is very dreadful. and. The ambience is great. The character designs of the animatronics are so uncanny, and you look at them and you, you just see soulless things that are moving, and you know you're not the only thing with life in the building, even if it may be these uncanny, tall, lengthy, just structurally weird looking creatures that you thought were meant for kids but are now trying to kill you there's only four main animatronics plus a secret fifth one that can actually attack you in this game but that doesn't matter because keeping track of all of them is a nightmare and will probably result in you either losing from a lack of power or just dying in general i mean there's no real way to make to keep tabs on everyone at once. And that's something this game does so well. It creates chaos, but it's minimized to where it's doable. So after the success of the first game, what do you think Scott does? He makes another game. FNAF 2. Now, take everything I just said about FNAF 1 
and throw it all out the window because I swear nothing is the same. It, this game, the first game is flipped over its head and reworked into something that I personally don't like. You take your core four animatronics, times it by three. You take the doors, you just get rid of them. You add vents. You get rid of the, the, the battery power. You add a mask. And the biggest sin of the entire game. Almost every single character has the exact same mechanic. Hooray, new game and an entirely new colorful cast of characters. I can't wait to see what's different or the same about the... One thing I failed to mention in the FNAF 1 segment was how the characters work, and that was intentional. The way everything plays in FNAF 1 was done so well. You have Bonnie. Bonnie can just teleport around the pizzeria. Like, he can be by your door, the next thing you know he's back on stage. It's just very weird. Um, and Chica. Chica's a lot slower and doesn't attack as much as Bonnie, but is still very active throughout the nights. After that, we have Foxy. Foxy he slowly creeps out of his cove, and if you open the cameras, it'll stall him longer. It keeps him at bay, I guess, just when you're just on the cameras. And eventually, when he gets fully out of the cove, you'll see him running down the hallway, and if you don't shut the door in time, you'll die. Finally, there's Freddy. He hides in the shadows, only being you can only hear him through his the sounds he makes in the kitchen or his beady eyes, and when he gets to your door, he will never leave. So you have to constantly keep track of where he is at all times, or else you're dead. Now, all of those traits are very unique with each character and give them an identity in the game. So what do you think Scott does in FNAF 2? As I showed you before, almost half of, well, over half of the characters have the exact same feature. When you see them, almost in your office, or in your office, put on the mask and hope you don't die. It is a very, very annoying uh, mechanic in the game. I don't like it, and it's, it's very time consuming, and it is very easy to die to the puppet in these few moments. I do think that the puppet and Foxy are the saving graces making this the not the worst FNAF game, which that's not very difficult to not be the worst FNAF game because FNAF AR exists, but yeah, so pretty much Foxy, when you see him, the mask doesn't work on him. You need to shine, shine him with your flashlight until he leaves. In the puppet, you have to wind up their music box constantly, and if it runs out, you will get jump scared. Golden Freddy and Balloon Boy are slightly different. You don't you don't want to let Balloon Boy get into your office or else he'll take your batteries. Um, but you need to use the mask on him too, so it's really really annoying. And Golden Freddy, I've actually never encountered in the game, so I'm but I'm pretty sure that you have to put on the mask to get rid of him. But he kind of like blips in your office, or you can see him in the hallway sometimes. I don't really know anything about him. Finally, Shadow Bonnie, uh, just an easter egg, don't really care about Shadow Bonnie, personally, so, yeah. All that being said, this game takes all originality of characters and just meshes it into something I don't like. The, the way that the game perfectly crafts a small cast of characters coming at you and was then just completely thrown out the window for an, a chaotic... Not even scary, like this game is not scary at all to me, it, it's just a very chaotic and um, not fun game to play. In FNAF 1, you have the doors, you know, the things that literally keep the animatronics from instantly killing you. Well those are gone now, I mean like, Scott threw that whole concept completely out the window, and it personally did not land for me as stated before in FNAF 2 you defend yourself with the mask but I want to talk about the vents the vents are completely misused in this game I feel like that you just 
once every like 20 seconds hit the lights on the vents and if nothing happens nothing happens or it felt like in FNAF 1 you constantly had to be checking for something on both of your sides and the way everything moved you had to try to utilize the cameras on the later nights to just manage between Freddy and Foxy the lights were just there so you were able to see the other two which was a very smart game mechanic in my opinion I think that for this game to have succeeded with the whole office aspect, it needed to be tighter together. There needed to be less, maybe just less room to move around in, I think. And that would have definitely helped a lot. What I mean by horror versus strategy is, the first game, like I said before, leads to the uncanny valley and the, 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 the ambience to carry the game. And although you might not find the jump scares scary, the atmosphere the game creates is terrifying. And in this game, I, I, I just don't know what happened. This game just, it takes everything the first game did about the, the, the atmosphere and replaces it with loud noises and mm, just nothing. I mean, you could say, but there's like a really dark hallway and then you have to stare the animatronics in the face. But when you see that many of them just looking at you, and it, it just doesn't feel as good as in the first game when they would peek into your door, and there was a reason for them doing this. It's just said here that they, they think you're a bad guy, but in the first game, it was like these creatures just move around at night, and if they see you, they'll just shove your body into a suit without a second thought. It, the, the whole idea of that is just ruined here and turned into tall machine look and stare put on mask in the first game while you had to be strategic to know when to shut the doors in this game it feels like you have to know when to open the cameras to look at the box and wind up the box and that's all you do you don't need the cameras at all and then you spend the rest of the game just putting on a mask hoping and praying that you did it right there's just nothing suspenseful about it. So, the jump scares in this game, <laughs> they're, it, it's laughably bad. So, I'm gonna go back to the first game for a second. You would see them at your door and have time to react, but because of the th other things you had to manage on the cameras, you didn't always have enough time to shut the door, you didn't have enough power, so you would hope that they would quickly go away if you hit it, or you don't get to hit it in time and you, you die. So, also, they stay at the door for a few more seconds, and if the buttons don't work to shut the doors, that you know you died, and it gives you time to reflect on what you did wrong. Now, in FNAF 2, that whole concept is just, it's just gone. All the animatronics, when you, from when you first see them in the hallway, have like three stages to them, making it, they, making it so they very slowly crawl up to you. And I think that is this game's, one of the game's biggest blunders. And then once they get into your office, you have a few seconds to react and flip on the mask. And instead of it instantly killing you, it, one, it makes you wait to see if you died or not, which leaves you in a little bit of suspense. But when I play the game, it mostly just makes me annoyed because I don't want to have to keep playing something that I already know I lost. And also the fact that the, the animatronics disappear and then later jump scare you is so dumb. I think a better way to handle this was um, to make them have less stages before they attack and maybe have their heads peeking around like the corners of the doors um, and then that's the indication of their first move towards your room instead of having a bunch of different positions until they get into your room and then you have time to react and I think once they're in your room you should be dead I feel like if they're at the doorway and you flip on the mask then they leave that would be better well that is the main issue with the jump scares but I have one more thing most of these jump scares are horrible like they're just not they're not good they are boring and the only one I genuinely like 
is is uh, Foxy because he just freaking leaps at you and it's really funny. As stated before, I do think this is the worst out of the original six games, and I just shared exactly why, so yeah. I just just remember this is all my opinion, but I feel like this game just was not a worthy sequel or prequel. I I just don't really enjoy I'm not talking about lore by the way, I'm just saying like overall this game just doesn't do it for me. I could have gone on about the character designs and other small details like that, but I don't really feel like doing that in this video. I wanted to keep it mostly my opinion and not just like ramble. I wanted like, like my main thoughts. So yeah, uh, hopefully you guys like this video. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. And um, for more content like this, just, to, just, keep, just keep watching my videos. I haven't really done a video like this ever, so this is very experimental for me. Anyways, bye.